Duncan, what's your, what's your take on as far as what you've experienced, but also what you've witnessed before you even entered the industry. And then Hugh, you can jump in after. What do you think of self-publishing versus traditional public publishing in terms of maybe drawbacks or, or any kind of comparisons that um, you can think of? My biggest two, three, four factors, maybe three, four, uh, <laughs> time, uh, Ignoring luck, I mean, you're going to need luck in both. Uh, right. you, like, you, you're just going to need luck and timing. You know, is is the market ready for your book? Does does the reader, reviewer, editor, agent, whatever, whoever's reading your book, see the potential in it, etc. So, um, but ignoring that, I think the the bigger detractors for me for self publishing was just time. Like, you write a book that could take you four years, five years, three years, whatever it is, and then you submit it, and then you might sit in a slush pile for three years unless you know somebody who's on that editor's desk and then it might take i don't know another three years before it might show up on a shelf and it's this from from start to kind of possible payoff is a decade to even know if people like your work enough to continue doing it um and the other catch to that as well is you you sign over you know you sign over royalties and you sign over creative rights uh so not just your print media, possibly, but to you know your movie, TV rights, etc., any kind of adaptation. And then, in most parts, at least recently, the advance that you get—I don't know what they were in the past, but I know they're not necessarily significant now. So it's what's the what's the payoff? And I always always looked at it, which is why I didn't do it for so long. Is if I'm going to take this huge, huge risk and invest all this time and effort and pain and blood and suffering. And research. And research. Why would I, and I thought of it as like a relay, you know, why would you hand over the baton at the finish line and say, you finish it for me? Right. Um, yes, mm. it might take me a little bit longer. I'm going to have to learn marketing. I'm going to have to learn branding. I'm going to have to find, you know, uh, 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 traditional publishers will also go, here's your cover. Here's a cover artist. You like it. And then you go, I, I, I like it, I guess. Whereas <laughs> self-publishing, you can really be as involved as you want or well, I mean, the more involved you are the better it is i think in the long term but yep. you can go shop around for people that you know, what we try to do is because my wife and i consider this as a business is basically find people and and skill sets that we don't have that can then complement this if it was a business and you know if and and kind of go all in in that regard um was that two points or three points you're three. still on the first point. I'm still on the first point. <laughs> no, I'm just sure. you. It's okay. Just keep talking. Time and money. Making make you have to think even deeper. Time or money Hugh, and you, you jump in for a second if you if you have some comments. Uh, I, I, th these are all points I agree with. Um, I think the time is a huge one. Um, I, I kind of had it as a goal when I started off to write for about ten years and do two books a year, and I thought after twenty novels self-published, I would know if I have a chance of making a career at this. And that could be what it takes to put one book out, um, go the traditional route. Um, and uh, it only took, you know, uh, three or four years to figure out that I really liked this and could get a handful of readers. That didn't necessarily mean that I was make a career at it, but I realized that I enjoyed it, would do it the rest of my life and would be happy to have the dozen or so readers that I picked up along the way. Um, and uh, I think some of the advantages, like getting into a bookstore, are nice. But like I was working in a bookstore when I started self-publishing, and I realized that books in a bookstore sit there for three to six months, and then they're gone, mm -hmm. unless they become a perennial seller, which is almost never. Mm -hmm. So that advantage, I think we oversell it to ourselves as, as aspiring writers. We think that publishers are going to put us in a bookstore and we'll be there forever. Uh, even if they distribute the book, not every bookstore will order a copy. More and more people are finding their books online mm -hmm. or at very small footprint bookstores, like in airports. You're never going to get in there unless you win like five lotteries in a row. So um, a lot of the things that we say are advantages uh, aren't big enough to make a difference. And then, of course, advances. Um, again, working in a bookstore helped me out that I was meeting all these authors coming in to give talks. And I, I found out they all had day jobs. They all taught creative writing somewhere or you know had some other career. Because even if they were winning awards and hitting bestseller lists, they were making fifty thousand dollars every uh, year and a half to three years, yeah. and uh, you can't live off that. And they, you know, yeah. no health insurance, no benefits, 
the paid vacation. So uh, the more I learned from inside the publishing industry, the more I realized that the things that we hold as advantages aren't that great. I, I eventually started seeing going the traditional route as it used to be that we call it self-publishing vanity publishing or vanity presses mm-hmm. um, because it was all about the vanity of seeing your book in print and you'd have to buy you know, 5,000 copies that sat in boxes in your garage and you sold out of your, the trunk of your car and that was uh, all money that you paid. And once self-publishing became practically free, which uh, you can spend money on it, cover art, editing, and, and you should if you can afford it. But if you can't afford it, I was did everything myself uh, for years. Uh, all the pagination for print books, all the uh, ebook formatting, all the uploading, the cover art, everything I did myself. Um, so it is possible. It's just uh, it's just hard, but the the finances don't preclude your ability to get your work out there. And then I realized that the vanity publishing was no longer self publishing. The vanity publishing now was traditional publishing. Um, going with a big publisher became uh, like a a badge of honor for authors and something you aspire to, not for financial reasons, but because people would take you seriously or you felt good about yourself. I One of the crazy things for me was uh, being with, I think I was, we were at Random House and they were offering me all this money for, for wool at the time. And I was turning them down because my sales were better than what they were offering. And at the end, when they realized they had no financial um, uh, motivation, they said, but wouldn't you love to say you're published by Random House? And that's when I realized like, oh God, it really is a vanity press at this point. Yeah. They're, they're, they're admitting it to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, things have things have changed, and I think uh, we shouldn't look down on any uh, path to publication unless it's like a total scam or something that's totally author unfriendly. Instead, we should just uh, talk about the pros and cons and let people know up front like what they're doing. Because if if you want to be with a traditional publisher and it and it means taking a lot longer and finding an agent and um, maybe not even making as much money, but because you want to see your book at a bookstore for a little bit and it feels good to be have the validation of a publisher. There's not, nothing wrong with those motivations at all. Um, I just think it's good for people to understand what to expect out of e- each path and for yeah. us to encourage all authors, however they choose to publish. 